This is the audiobook sample for King's Undertaker, The Kings of Men MC, Book 5, by Kai Brightly. This is my 28th audiobook, and it was released on August 22nd, 2020. Making a character like Tim, who, in previous books of this series, has always maintained a threatening air of aloofness, into a main character of his own romance novel, is a daunting task. It can be very difficult to take side characters who are relatively one-note, yet still mysterious, and make their inner thoughts and actions as a protagonist true to their personality up to that point. Even so, I think this book did a good job with it. Tim is not an overly complex man. He wants to have sex and dominate people, and has trouble with commitment and true intimacy. Lee, the other main character is also relatively simple. He is a ship without a rudder, a directionless fellow who wants to live a good life but has no idea where to go. Sometimes, narrative truth can be found in simplicity, and I think that's the case with this particular romance. Because the two men aren't excessively complicated, the push-and-pull attraction between their characters is more explosive and directly captivating. I hope you enjoy this audiobook sample. Chapter 4, Tim The dull squeezing of a migraine had settled behind my left eye, sashayed into my sinus cavity, and even my molars pulsed with low-grade pain. I'd barely slept. All I could see was muscles flexing under my whip every time I closed my eyes. My delts and lats had a good used ache from my workout with the whip but the muscle twinges had nothing on how my demon pet would be feeling this morning. Lee. Gus had run down the name for me, like the good boy he was. I licked my lips, tasting wax left over from the poison berry lipstick that hadn't worn off. Lee had gotten himself onto that stage last night, so I was betting he would find his way here. I traced a hand down my bare chest and stopped, circling my own navel running my finger around it absently to feel something real and grounding. Snickering to myself, I paced out of my bedroom into the bright sunshine on the upper deck to get my head together, staring out over the small gorge next to my house. The sunlight hurt my head, but I wanted the bite of frigid air on my body. The cold on my naked skin woke me up and made me come alive in ways nothing else could. If I were at the funeral home, I might have crawled into the body fridge to try to calm my brain and body down. In there, the smell sometimes got to me, though. Out here, the view was magnificent. All tree branches with a few forlorn red and gold leaves searching for the sky. Far below, a narrow tributary that eventually led to the Oswego River sparkled a glittery ribbon that reflected the late morning sunshine like a million bright diamonds. Nature spread out around my property for miles. I had no neighbors, and that was probably a good thing. I stretched high and then rested my hands on the railing, dropping my head. I wasn't exactly proud of what I did last night. I'd taken a lot of things that probably shouldn't have gone to me, and that was fine. Oh well. But I'd asked him to my house. What was I now? Some daddy dom? Gonna lick my boy's bruises clean and put him in a bathtub? Kiss the boo-boos better? I snorted. But I did invite him here, and it was a fact that I wanted to make sure he was okay. I leaned and rested my chin on my fist. A hawk wheeling in the sky suddenly swooped toward the ground, and when it emerged again, burdened, I took it as some sort of gruesome omen. Yeah, I should snatch what I wanted from Lee the demon scum, and eat him up while I could. Lee was a demon. Things might boil over into full-out hostilities with the demons soon if we somehow took another one of their members from them. So no pet for me. Tapping my bare foot on the cold wood, I watched the hawk lazily pinwheel toward a tall pine tree in my yard, not too far away. The branches were thick and sturdy. The monster bird sat there and ripped apart what I thought was a rabbit, nature being nature. Brutal and beautiful. No one who'd ever seen this in person would wonder where dinosaurs went. I growled and my head throbbed. I couldn't keep my pet, but I could play and set him loose back into the wild, so that's what I'd do. 
all natural like. Mind made up, I went inside, letting the door hang open, and made my way toward the shower. I loved my house. I'd used my own two hands to build it. And okay, most of the kings who had any sense of what side of a hammer to swing helped, too. My Uncle Tom had stopped by the summer I did it, off and on. It was an A-frame, nothing fancy, plonked in the center of ten acres, right outside of New Gothenburg. I passed through my bedroom, and considered what my pet might think of it. If I could blindfold him before he got in the front door, he might think he was somewhere in the outer rims of hell. My queen-sized bed was an old-school BDSM custom-made, steel-framed four-poster. All four posts had solid rings sticking out like caterpillars, crawling toward the black, gauzy cloth I'd thrown over the top. I'd welded the masterpiece myself. I could probably suspend someone on that bed, but I'd never tried it, didn't usually bring anyone out here. Most of the play furniture hadn't been used, since I didn't like to drag anyone this far away from the city. Made it awkward to kick them out when you could hear coyotes calling to one another in the woods. A link to purchase King's Undertaker is in the description below. This title was a royalty share production, so I make 20% from any purchases. Thanks for listening!